This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2962, The Value of Fasting from Anything and How to Get Started by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. I'm your narrator, Justin Mollick, reading you blogs every day of the year. Appreciate you coming back to listen and sharing the show with others. That's how I've been able to keep doing this over the years. But with that, let's get right to our next post as we optimize your life. The Value of Fasting from Anything and How to Get Started by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. In my mind growing up, the idea of fasting was always tied to food. My Catholic friends would fast during Lent, the 40 days leading up to Easter, by not eating meat on Fridays. While my family never observed Lent in the traditional sense, I was still encouraged to consider fasting from food as a spiritual discipline by abstaining from eating for 24 hours as a means to focus more attentively on God. In many ways, my views on fasting have not changed. I still see spiritual value in removing food for a period of 24 hours. The practice does indeed heighten awareness of spiritual matters. And nothing I write beyond this point is meant to take away from that practice or the spiritual benefits of it. I only mean to add to it. You see, as I've matured in my life and my spirituality, I've begun to recognize additional value in the discipline of fasting. Moving beyond abstaining from food, I've also learned to appreciate the benefits of fasting from almost anything in moderation. Fasting, it seems to me, is ultimately about self-control. It is about the intentional removal of one external controlling factor in our lives for a period of time. It is an exercise in self-control, and self-control holds benefit for all, regardless of our faith or non-faith preferences. In college for the first time, I set out to give up one controlling factor in my life for a period of 40 days, a form of fasting that drew inspiration from my Catholic friends, although I'll be quick to admit that most world religions embrace some form of fasting. My thinking went like this. If there is any external reality in my life that I could not give up for 40 days, it has become a controlling influence on me. By definition, I have lost an element of self-control. Over the years, as a result of this exercise, I've fasted from television for 40 days, eating out for 40 days, my cell phone for 40 days, and candy for 40 days. Each time I choose one thing that would be difficult to part with for a period of days and then challenge myself to go without it as an exercise in self-control. Each time it seemed, I learned more about myself and gained additional insight into finding balance in my life. I'm not alone in my practice of this discipline. The minimalists recently gave up social media for 30 days. Corny Carver has written about giving up sugar for 30 days. And almost everyone who attempts an extended shopping ban will tell you it was worth it. There is value in this practice, however you choose to embrace it. Currently, my fasting practice looks a bit different than the extended period of abstaining 30 or 40 days from a specific item. Over the past year, I've returned to the 24-hour model of intermittent fasting, choosing to abstain from coffee on Saturdays. It's not a long, drawn-out practice that requires pre-planning of any sort. It's just a simple reminder to me every weekend that I am in control of my habits, not coffee. Recently, I texted a friend to see if I could call her about a writing project on a Sunday evening. She said I'd have to wait until Monday. Sunday evenings are family time. I don't do any work on purpose. Just another form of fasting, I thought to myself. There is value in this discipline. Here's a quick guide to get started. Number one, choose one external influence in your life to fast from. The best practice for testing and strengthening self-control is to choose an item you imagine would be difficult to part with. Finish this sentence. I can never go 40 days without blank. Whatever pops into your head might be a good place to start. Maybe it's chocolate or Facebook or alcohol or Netflix. You get to decide. Number two, choose a period of time or regular interval for your exercise. You may choose seven days, 40 days, or 365. Or maybe you wanna fast every Saturday, every weekend, or every first week of the month. Again, the choice is yours, but do choose a period or interval of time that will challenge you and require a measure of self-control on your end. Number three, make arrangements if necessary. If you're choosing to abstain from sugar for 30 days, it might not be wise to keep lots of sugary snacks in your pantry. If you decide to give up television for a period of time, it may be beneficial to remove the temptation entirely, assuming other members in your family do not object. When I gave up eating out for 40 days, 
I needed to think through and prepare adequately for brown bag lunches each day instead. Number four, embrace the discipline and expect the beginning to be the hardest. There's nothing wrong with this being difficult, especially at first. Expect it and embrace it. In fact, if the fasting is not difficult for you, you may wanna consider choosing something more difficult to give up. Number five, find meaning in defeat. If you give in at some point during the experiment and succumb to the temptation, don't lose heart. Make failure your servant by examining its root and then get back up to try again. Number six, re-enter slowly. When you complete your exercise, reintroduce the item into your life deliberately. Remember, you have not committed to giving up something for the rest of your life, only for a predetermined period of time. But that doesn't mean you automatically return the element to the same level of influence it had before. Almost certainly, you will have learned something during the process that will enable you to reintroduce the item in a healthier manner. Many of the external items that subconsciously control our lives are not needs, they are wants, like coffee, dessert, television, Facebook, etc. But we have become so accustomed to having them in our lives on a daily basis, we quickly confuse our wants and our needs. Fasting from anything and or everything for a set period of time helps put these items back in proper perspective and gives us the strength to walk away when necessary. There is value in the practice of fasting. I found this to be true. So will you. You just listened to the post titled The Value of Fasting from Anything and How to Get Started by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. Maruchan superfans are everywhere. From the busy moms who want to deliver maximum flavor in a flash to dorm room diners who want to put some slurp in their step. There are a ton of copycats you could use, but if you want to bless your bowl, there's only one true Maruchan. Whether you choose instant lunch, ramen bowls, yakisoba, or restaurant quality gold, Maruchan is the only ramen worth obsessing over. Smiles for all, Maruchan. See what all the ramen hype is about at maruchan.com. And thank you to Joshua. I really like this one because we'll often let our compulsions do what they please without bringing mindfulness and awareness to it, to the point of one-click purchases as a dopamine hit. And like you mentioned, you don't even have to go 40 days like Joshua did. 40 days without a cell phone is pretty impressive, but why not try this on a smaller level? Like first keeping your phone away just at dinner. I did that accidentally the other day and loved it. Choose what works for you, it's really important. But that'll do it for today. Have a great day, great weekend if you're listening in real time. And I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.